Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us for our Sunday School Lesson Overview. Uh, th today we uh, start a new unit in our, uh, uh, in our Lifeways uh, Bible Studies for Life uh, Sunday School. Uh, our lesson today is uh, uh, Put God First. It's found in Exodus 20 verses 1 through 6 and Psalm 16. Uh, 1 through the first part of verse 4, and then uh, 9 through 11. It's uh, uh, the first uh, uh, unit that we're in in this is actually a fresh look at the Ten Commandments, and uh, so we begin by looking at that just a little bit. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, begin by uh, looking at some scriptures, but first I'd like just like to mention the little story that's at the start of our science school lesson. Uh, interesting about a man visiting a doctor uh, uh, telling him that his entire body hurt and from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet and uh, that he felt pain and so every place he touched brought him great pain to him. Well, the doctor looked him over and said, well, this is odd, I just don't see anything wrong. And so he had the man to touch different places and every place he touched he cried out in pain. Uh, after a few minutes, the doctor uh, made his diagnosis. He said, uh, Sir, you have a dislocated finger. Uh, the problem wasn't with his body and everything else that was going on, but just with that one finger. And our lesson writer used that to say that while it felt like everything was wrong, only one thing was wrong. It's true for our lives as well. Even though it may seem like everything in life is a mess, uh, the solution comes down to the three words, put God first. And doing that will affect everything else in life. Let's read together uh, from Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 6. The Bible says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thy, down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Now, our lesson writer begins uh, with a very significant thing. He says we are to put God first because He alone is God. And uh, boy, does that really make sense. That uh, tells us a great deal. Uh, the reality is there is only one God. And the reality is that we are to love God first and foremost in our life in every kind of way. Uh, when we give anyone or anything the devotion and worship that God alone deserves. Uh, the Bible uh, calls that what it really is. It is idolatry. Uh, now, the reality is that we don't uh, uh, carve statues out of trees anymore. We don't, uh, we don't build them with stone. We don't overlay them with gold. We don't, uh, we don't bow down to uh, things that we have made in that sense of the word. We don't declare our, our allegiance to them. We don't make sacrifices or anything like that uh, to them. But yet, the reality is that there are idols that still exist today in the very place where we live. And those idols may not be so visible, uh, but they are there. Uh, in, an idol is any person, place, thought, or thing that usurps God's rightful place in our life. If we put something else before God, uh, then that something else is indeed an idol. So God calls us to devote ourselves to Him. He is, the, he is King. He is supreme. He is over the universe. Uh, he, is, he alone is God. And so we should serve Him. We should love Him. We should be devoted to Him. Uh, God's uh, commandments, uh, the things that He gives us to do, are based on the fact that He loves us, He cares about us, 
And in that care, he wants us to do things that make our life better in reality and the life of those that are around us better uh, because uh, we put him first. Jesus uh, tells us in the New Testament that the two most important commandments are these. Uh, love God and love others. Uh, there's a song out right now that says, Love God, Love People, which is uh, kind of a neat, uh, neat thing. Uh, to be saying. Before God handed down any commands though, before he told us what we needed to do, he told us what he had done for us. And he certainly did that with Israel in the 20th chapter of the book of Exodus. He, he said, I'm the one that did this. I'm the one that brought you out. I'm the one that made you free. Uh, and the reality is that uh, God uh, has done all of those things for us as well. The very air that we breathe comes from God. Every good and every perfect gift comes uh, down from God. So uh, the, our gratitude ought to be the basis for our living for Him, for our keeping His commandments, for doing those things that are pleasing in His sight. So when God asks us to put Him first, He's asking for our hearts. He's asking for us to devote ourselves to Him. Now, we have... Some other uh, verses found in the book of Psalms that uh, kind of help us in, along in that direction. And uh, they're a part of our lesson today. In Psalm 16, uh, 1 to the first part of uh, the fourth verse, it says this. It says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth ex not to thee but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Um, basically, uh, David says, uh, God alone is good, uh, and every goodness comes from God. God alone is the or originator of all else that is good, uh, uh, as well as being good himself. And so while we know these two things from that particular statement, God, uh, good has one source, and that's God. And if something is not good, it doesn't come from God, which is actually a, uh, the, uh, the premise being God is good and the, uh, uh, and the extension of that. Uh, the conclusion is that if something is not good, it doesn't come from God. And, and uh, that's uh, certainly true. If uh, uh, Using the basis of my... Uh, logic class when I was in college. Uh, it, uh, those are uh, there. There's a reality to the way that we can come to a right conclusion by uh, looking at what uh, uh, what the premise states and how it says it. Truth is that we tend to, when we have something go wrong, we tend to focus on the thing that's wrong. We we focus on the pain that we feel. We focus on the difficulties that we face and uh, all of those kinds of things and uh, that's what the devil wants us to do. Uh, uh, but uh, the reality is that uh, it is in our weakness that we recognize the strength of God. It is in depending upon Him that we are able uh, to overcome, that we are able to, uh, to face our situation in the right kind of way. We uh, uh, according to our lesson writer, uh, what Satan wants us to do is uh, to doubt the goodness of God. And there are people that certainly do doubt his goodness. But the reality is that everything that God does, everything that God has planned, everything that God leads us to is for good. Uh, when it comes down to it, uh, we don't see uh, the whole picture. We only see a little part of it. But when we could, if we could see the whole picture, we would see uh, that God's desire is for the good uh, to take place and to happen. Uh, our lesson writer mentions both uh, Paul and Job in talking about these things, and uh, he talks about Paul's thorn in the flesh, which we don't really know exactly what was. But we know that he looked to God, uh, saying uh, that uh, uh, that our strength is made perfect, and his strength is made perfect in our weakness. That 
the strength that we get comes from him. And then, of course, looking at Job and all the trouble that he faced and the fact that in all of it, uh, he still put God first. He still looked to God in every situation. And so, uh, our lesson writer uh, uses a verse that says, uh, All things work together for good uh, to them that love the Lord and are the called according to His purpose. Uh, all things uh, don't work together for good for everybody in every situation. It works for the good when God is put first in our life. It, it works good when we love the Lord. It works good uh, in that direction. Uh, and so we, uh, we should want uh, to put God first. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no bearableness, no shadow of turning, it says in James 1.17. In other words, plainly and simply, God is the source of all good. And God is constantly giving us good things in our life, whether we see them or not, whether we acknowledge them or not. Uh, the oxygen we breathe, the food we eat, uh, the ability of, uh, to be able to do the things that we do. And so if something is good, its source is God. The remaining part of uh, Psalms 16, uh, 9 to 11 in our lesson says this, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh is all, also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Now, uh, what David was talking about in this psalm is that uh, the path of life is God himself. Uh, God isn't just one of the ways to choose. God's way is the only way that leads to joy, uh, that leads to life, that leads to uh, an e eternity uh, beyond time, uh, pleasures forevermore. Uh, and Acknowledging that, we recognize Jesus does not just know the way. He is the way uh, to the Father. He is the way uh, to heaven. And so, our lesson writer says it this way, when we remain in Jesus and align ourselves under Him, He takes us where we need to go. He opens those doors we didn't even have the ability to knock on previously. He overcomes the obstacles our emotions may have dug up. He calms the seas that look too difficult to face on our own, He is the way to abundant life on earth, and He is the way uh, to eternal life. Eternal life is a gift we receive by placing faith alone in Christ alone for the payment of our sins. Jesus was the sacrifice. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus shed His blood. Jesus paid our price for our sins. And when we trust Him and Him alone, uh, then we are forgiven for our sins. And uh, so the Ten Commandments uh, isn't designed uh, to take us to heaven. They are designed to, uh, to show us. Uh, to, uh, and while uh, God wants us to obey His commands, the reality is that none of us have, com have obeyed them perfectly and completely. Uh, so we need that sacrifice. We need Jesus. Because every one of us has sinned. Every one of us has done wrong. And we need Him. And so, I like the way the lesson writer put it. He, he, uh, God initiated a credit transfer. He took, he took the perfect credit of Jesus' righteousness and transferred His perfect credit score to each of us who receives it through faith in Him. And what that means then, following that, is that we ought to live our life in the right kind of way. Uh, uh, let everyone that nameth the name of Jesus depart from iniquity, uh, uh, the Bible says. That, that uh, it is uh, loving God and loving our neighbor ought to lead us to good works, ought to lead us uh, to doing things in the right kind of way. So we can willingly and gratefully pursue a life pleasing to God by placing Him first over everything else. Now, one thing that I didn't see addressed in our Sunday school lesson, which I think is very significant in, because a lot of people look at those verses and it really bothers them, and that's uh, the verses in Exodus where it says um, that 
For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and um, showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. Uh, well, a lot of times people look at that and they say, well, it's not fair that the, uh, the third and the fourth generation of them, uh, that the iniquity is, is, uh, is visited on them. Well, the way that it's visited, plainly and simply, is this. A child tends to follow the footsteps of his father and his mother. And if the father lives in iniquity and doesn't keep the commandments and doesn't live for the Lord, the children tend to follow their father and not God. And so the plain simple fact is that every generation that follows does the same thing. We have to break that. And we, even if our fathers did not live for God. We need to live for God. Even if they weren't the example they should have been, we need to be the example that we should be. And so we break that trend. The reason the iniquity is visited is because the fathers sin and lead their sons to sin and their grandsons to sin and their great-grandchildren to sin. And so we need to love the Lord our God first and foremost because He loved us first. Thank you for joining me today in uh, this uh, Sunday School lesson from Lifeways um, Bible Studies for Life uh, curriculum. And um, uh, we would love to see you at Stony Run Baptist Church uh, at 11 o'clock today. We'll be having service, the Lord willing. And um, uh, we'd love for you to be there. It's at 608 Stony Run Road, uh, Richmond, Kentucky. That's a Richmond address. It's out in the county uh, off of Red House Road. And uh, on Stony Run, about uh, three and a half miles up Stony Run Road. And uh, we'd, uh, we'd love to see you. Uh, come and visit with us if you can. Hopefully we'll be uh, having a revival. Um, two nights this week, Friday and Saturday, with Brother T.A. Lester. And uh, uh, I'll tell you, if you've never heard him preach, uh, you would uh, just really love to hear him. He's a, he's a great preacher and a great man of God, and uh, we'd love to have you uh, come and uh, visit with us uh, this Friday and Saturday, the 11th and 12th, at Stony Run Baptist Church at 7 o'clock for Revival. Uh, thanks for, uh, for tuning in, and uh, uh, we hope to see you soon.